you know, um, digital savviness is important because, you know, we are, like it or not, we are in the face of technology and then it, it changes and you have to remain current in order to know what, where your children are going to. You know, right now I look at it as I'm in on, on a learning curve, on a learning journey with them because my children are still young. So, you know, I, in order to understand them, I need to speak their lingo. Correct, not you know. If it's just like you know how we were back then, without the digital thing in our face, okay, we had generational gaps. Correct, no, we talk, you know, I have no tai go. I cannot speak to my father. You know, he doesn't understand me and all that. So I think it's very important to understand what that generation needs. And because of that, you know, as parents, we improve and upgrade ourselves so that we can roughly understand. Okay, if the talk, your friends talk about Instagram, like my daughter now, she's very big on Instagram. Okay. If I just tell her, it's an upright ban. No. Cannot. Cannot. I'm sorry, you are just too young for it. Until you're 21 years old, you can use it. I want to share with my friends what's happening with me, you know? Mm. So then we talk, we have a discussion. You know, if you, you reject them right away, there is no avenue for you to discuss next time. Your communication lines are just broken at this point. Mm. That's it. My mama doesn't want me to do it. But you know what? Uh, the forbidden fruit is always tastier, right? Mm. Yeah. So she'll find ways and means. That's what I think. You know, children will find ways and means to get what they want, especially they don't want to appear like, you know, are you, you're from the Stone Age or what? You don't have an Instagram account. You know, <laughs> they are not in. They're not cool anymore okay. amongst their friends, you see? Right? Mm. So we need to be digitally savvy so that, you know, we can keep up with them. We may, we may need to learn from them some days, but it's okay. Let it be a learning journey so it's a two-way communication and you can talk about things. Yeah, I just wanted to add in a particular um, incident that ha actually happened to me to kind of help me understand this aspect about communicating. You see, I, I'm one of those that actually resisted the smartphone. Okay, so I was wow. using a dumb phone for a very long time. Okay, and hey, then... coming from a doctor? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what happened was that... Um, uh, do, uh, I, I go for tennis trainings with my friends, okay, my, my tennis team, I'm part of a tennis team. So what happens is that they communicate through WhatsApp and they don't tell me when trainings are cancelled and stuff like that. Then I realise, hey, this is not happening. So I actually message the tennis captain to say, please, understand, I'm using a dumb phone, I don't have WhatsApp, can you please inform me? The captain said, yes, he didn't do it, okay? So from then on, I said, cannot. Okay, I will get a smartphone. So I got my first smartphone, but I resisted. I did not subscribe to data plan. Okay? Wow. So what happened was that I used the Wi-Fi in my campus at home to communicate. Then one day during tennis training, I was sitting on the bus going over there. Just when I reached there, I realized training was cancelled. And it was told because it was raining, it was urgent, it was told to me over WhatsApp, assuming that I had Wi-Fi on the bus. Ah. So, I began to realize, A, there is a very strong social pull that no matter how hard I resist, I also find it very difficult. Yes. And that, that was when I start beginning to understand how my daughter feels when she first asked me for her Facebook account, when she first asked me for her WhatsApp account. Because she said she wanted to interact with her friends on WhatsApp, especially her gymnastic team. And that, I know, the social pool can be very strong because I've experienced it. And I feel that uh, that's what uh, Evelyn was sharing, that when you communicate with a child, you begin to understand what goes on with the child's uh, life. And most of the time, some of this media uh, uh, adoption is true friends and the social pool is very strong. We were talking about um, how much time is uh, a benchmark when you let them play computer games. I think for me a guiding principle is when you have given something away, it's very hard to take it back. Yes. So it's better to start conservative. So for example, back to my son's example about the FIFA game, at first I told him 10 minutes full stop, don't argue with me. And then of course, when I was started watching him play, I realised that actually 10 minutes is a, very, a bit unfair because he may be in the middle of a game and then he said, nah, time's up, stop. Half and time the, only, half time Yeah, the poor guy never gets to finish his game. He's such a loser, you know. <laughs> so in the end, I decided that, okay, okay, cannot go by time, to be fair. So I said, okay, we change our rules. <laughs> change to one game or two games easier to count. Like, because one game is like quite long, you know. Yeah, first of all, as a parent of young kids, uh, and for those of you who have young kids here, my f I advocate uh, delay uh, screen time games as, as, as far back as you can. Not because it's necessarily bad. I think it's just, I think 
I think because when, when, when kids get something, games are designed to be very immersive, very exciting, uh, FIFA, very, very, very fun. And addictive. And addictive, yes, you said it. <laughs> so I think, I think because of that, when, when, when a child at a young age starts to kind of like get in, in, into games, everything else seems a little not so exciting. Like, like reading books, are you sure? Like, I can learn all these things by playing the games I play. Why, why do I want to read books? So if you can delay uh, screen time, games, as much as you can, uh, great. If, and, and I understand that a lot um, can, you, 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 cannot, you, can't, you cannot do that. Um, my experience working with uh, a lot of these um, youth gamers and all that, for those that kind of like mm, find it more difficult to, means that they are like addicted or they, they find it more difficult to manage uh, their, their, their gaming habits and time, I think most of the time, not all of it, but most of it, we, I realize that it's lack of supervision at home. So I think um, involved parenting is really, really important. I think this, it, being a parent is really, really difficult. But being a digitally savvy parent is a lot more tougher. And I think on the games itself, I, I would just want to say that not all games are created equal. There are some games that are uh, better than, than the others. They are like puzzle games, uh, you know, games like FIFA and all this. They are, they are quite, quite, quite okay. But there are some games that really kind of like uh, take up a lot, they're designed to take up a lot of time and maybe kind of like um, bring your kids into places that they're not supposed to, to be in or, or, or pick up habits they're not supposed to, to, to pick up and just, just spend a lot of time. I mean, the, the, the pros and cons are, are, are a lot. I think.